Hey there, Eden here, and I want to show you something very cool in my opinion. So in this video, we're going to implement the agent executor with the Langchain core component, and then we're going to be implementing the exact same agent executor, but using Langraph. And my goal of this video is to show you how cool is Langraph and to show you how easy it is to implement advanced agent with it. So this is the version using Langchain Core, and I'll be using solely Langchain components. I won't be using Langraph here. So you can see that I defined a function which is called getXLength, and I converted it into a tool with the tool decorator of Langchain. And over here, I've implemented a helper function, find tool by name, which receives the list of tools and a tool name, and return us the tool with the matching name. And let's check out my implementation of the agent executor. And here we have the famous React prompt based on the React paper. Now, this prompt was written by the Langchain team. And I have to say that personally, I think this is one of the most beautiful prompts in generative AI. And I'm sure that there have been a lot of work in prompt engineering to get to this prompt. So if anyone from the Langchain team is hearing me, then nicely done. And because currently our tools are static, then we can simply plug in into the placeholders of tools and tool names, the tool descriptions and the tool names. So that's what I'm doing here with the partial method. And here I'm simply initializing an LLM and giving it the observation and backslash and observation stop sequences. And this is to prevent hallucinations. And finally, in the agent variable, I'm holding here the agent chain or the react chain, whatever you want to call it, which simply takes this prompt, it runs it in the LLM, which is going to serve now as our reasoning engine, and it's going to parse out the outputs into agent finish or agent action objects. And now the beautiful react loop is starting. So we're going to be running this while loop as long as we don't have an agent finish object in our hand. So this means that the LLM didn't determine that we need to finish our run. So we're going to invoke the prompt to the LLM, the React prompt. We're going to get a result back. So it's either going to be an agent action, and this is in case we need to actually run a tool. And when we get the agent action, we have already the information of all the tools we need to run and what's their input. So we can simply use the helper function, find tool by name that we've implemented. And after we do that, we get the tool result, which is called the observation. We print it, we append it to the results, and we're now starting to iterate it again. So it can continue and continue and run tools if we get agent action. So this means the LLM decided that we need to use a tool. However, if we get an agent finish, so this means that the LLM, our reasoning engine, decided that we want to finish our run, then we won't be going into this if statement in line 94. So this loop is going to be broken. And finally, we print the result. Alrighty, let's go and check out the LangGraph implementation. And here, we'll go and first start with the React prompt. So instead of writing the prompt manually, I'm going to download it from the Langchain Hub. So if I'll go to Langchain Hub, I can show you this prompt over here, very famous, and I'm simply going to download it dynamically. And I'm going to define a tool, which is called triple, which takes a number and triples it. And we're going to use the Tavily search tool, which is an amazing search engine for generative applications because the result we get back is going to be very oriented for Gen AI applications. So we're going to get the exact results that we want. And this is because the search engine was designed to be downstreamed into an LLM. And in line 28, I create the React agent chain. So it's the runnable exactly like we did over here, the Langchain core component. And we can see that this function also returns something similar. So to take the prompt, to send it to the LLM with the um, stop signals, and to simply parse out the output. Anyways, let's go and check out the um, agent state. And the state is going to be passed around our graph and our nodes are going to update the state. So we have the user input, which is not going to change a lot. And we have here the agent outcome. So every time we reason, so the reasoning would be to send this react prompt we saw before to the LLM, then we're going to save it and update the agent outcome. 
and in the intermediate steps we're simply going to save all of their tool execution results so we're going to save the agent action object which has all the information about the tool that was invoked and we're going to be saving the second element of the tuple is going to be the result of that tool converted into a string and the operator.add is to tell Angular app to append every tool execution result into this variable and not to overwrite it. Alrighty, let's go to nodes py. And here we have our nodes logic implementation. So we have only two nodes. One is going to be called run agent reasoning agent. And it's going to take our state and it's going to run the react prompt with it. Now notice in our state, we have a input attribute. So it's going to invoke the React prompt with the input attribute at the first time, and that would compile and run fine. And now we get the agent outcome, which hopefully is going to be a tool to run or to say that we finished if it's an agent finish object, and we want to update now our state in the graph. So the second node is going to be execute tools, and it's simply going to take the agent outcome, which is going to be an agent action type. So this is the assumption over here. This node is only run when there is an agent action. And then we're simply going to execute the tools and append the results into the intermediate steps in our state. All right, let's go now to our main file. And here we're going to define our graph. So we're going to define a state graph, which takes in our agent states that we wrote. We want to build the nodes and set the agent reason to be our entry point to the graph execution. And we also want to define a conditional edge. So after we reason from our agent, we want to decide whether we want to finish the graph execution or to go and invoke some tools. So for that, we're going to be using the should continue function, which outputs which node should we go next in our graph execution. And we're going to use that when we defined a conditional edge from the agent reason node. So that's going to create two conditional edges, one to the act node and the other to the end node. And finally, we compile our graph and we simply invoke it. And let's go and invoke it with the input, what is the weather in San Francisco, list it and triple it. And let's see the result now. and our graph ran successfully. And the current weather in San Francisco is 10.6 Celsius, pretty cold, and tripled it's 31.8. So this looks legit. Alrighty, let's go to Langsmith and I want to show you the traces. So here we have the tools execution, we have the tabling search tool execution and the triple function execution. Now we can see that the input was 10.6 and the result was 31.8. And those decimal points make me question my implementation. So I'm simply going to test it. And I just remember that those are because I casted the integer into a float and that's why we got this result. Anyways, this is the Tavoli search results on the weather in San Francisco. And here we can see our land graph execution and here we can see that we have all of our nodes executions. So the first one was the agent reason, and then we decided to act and get the weather. And then we reasoned again, and the agent told us that we need to go and use the multiplication tool, the triple tool, and then it reasoned again, and it decided to finish. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and my goal here was to show you the two flavors of implementing an agent executor one with LangChain core components and the other using LangGraph. I personally like more the LangGraph implementation simply because it's much easier to describe and to illustrate using the graph. And also the debugging is much more easier when we have nodes and edges and the flow is well-defined. So I'm a big fan of LangGraph.